what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so we're going to be talking about buffy season two the second season of one of the best shows to again ever air on television in the late 90s during the early 2000s and buffy season two really raises the stakes no pun intended there it's set a few months after uh the summertime between this season and what happened in season one uh buffy Xander and Willow are starting their junior year at Sunnydale High. Buffy's just coming back from LA. She spent the summer in LA with her father, catching up with him. And she's actually been bothered the whole time she was with him because she comes back a little bit more. She has a mood shift. She doesn't, she's not acting like her normal self. She's being mean, being kind of, uh, she's using people. It's the first episode when she was bad. And you know there's something wrong with her because it's just not, it's out of character. Her mannerisms are not the same. She seems much more violent during her uh, training sessions with Giles in the library. It's just clearly, that it's clear that something's going on with her. And it's, it's the fact that she hasn't come, to, she hasn't properly coped with the fact that she died a few months ago at the hands of the Master during the season finale. Uh, Prophecy Girl, when she had to face the Master and he killed her, only for Xander to revive her moments later and she was actually brought back to life but she hasn't been able to cope with the fact that she did actually die she hasn't been able to cope with that so it's just been a trauma for her this whole summer and when they find out that the master is going to be brought back or that the anointed one and his new group are going to try to bring the master back they basically put a stop to it and then we go on from there this season uh raises the stakes for many reasons again we have cordelia back into the fold she's now becoming a member of this of the now dubbed scooby gang is what they call themselves and then she actually starts dating xander and angel ends up losing his soul he ends up reverting back to his former self angelus and we are also introduced to spike and drusilla for the first time and these are like two of the big bads for this season before angel loses his soul so then we end up having three big bads kind of a lot there but i i would say this season manages it all well it, it manages it all very well in my opinion i think season two is going to be if not up there with the discussion it's in the discussion for the best season out of this series it is season two is in that discussion for the best season out of this series so we're also again introduced to spike and drusilla who are the two new vampires in town. Spike has brought Drusilla to Sunnydale, hoping that the Hellmouth's mystical energy will restore her to her new fulfilled strength because she just had some type of incident. There was a mob in Prague, I think, and now he wants to get his significant other, Drusilla, back to her full strength. And Drusilla is clearly insane, uh, but she's played tremendously by the actress, and I can't think of the actress's name, and James Marsters, he's amazing as Spike. It's a it's a real shame that they were considering making his character be a one-off, but they decided to keep him around because of how he came off with the audience. And I think Joss Whedon also liked him, so I think that's what also really helped. But the fact that they kept him around because he became a fan favorite in the later seasons, I think that was good because we got to see Spike go from this bad guy to what he became later on in the series. Um, and it was just a very touching a very touching sequence to kind of watch watch someone go from being the most evil thing you have come across and then to now literally saving the world and of course i don't want to get into any spoilers but you you guys know what i'm talking about spike has one of the most interesting arcs in this show i'll just say that and i'm glad they did not kill him off after introducing him in this season we also are introduced to Kendra, who is the new Slayer that got activated after Buffy died, even if it was just for a split second. We learned that it does not matter how long a Slayer has died. If a Slayer dies, it, it seems to not matter. When you die, it activates the next one. Kendra has been activated from Buffy's sudden death, even though it didn't last. It doesn't matter how long it lasts because now there's a second one. Kendra is back no not back but Kendra comes to Sunnydale to assist Buffy during two episodes first what's my line and what's my line part two when Drusilla is brought back to her full strength and then this whole season is just very it raises the stakes on so many levels and this it's like a big allegory of how it's the way it's not just this season this show in general the allegories and the way things represent real world problems for a lot of people and the fact that angel ends up losing his soul because buffy and him have intercourse it speaks to that allegory in particular is going to speak to several men and women or young boys and girls 
who have gone through something similar where you sleep with someone and then they start to act different. But of course, they're not turning into hopefully not some they're not turning to, into a bloodthirsty killer, killing all your friends and stalking you and making your life hell. But I'm sure plenty of you have been there. And if you have, I'm sorry. But it's just the way things in this season represent one of the biggest uh, issues anyone could go through in life when you have sex at such a young age, probably having sex too early, and then you end up having to face the consequences. And I think that's one of the biggest things about this season, consequences for your actions and living and owning those consequences and accepting them head on and learning from your mistakes. So Buffy ends up having sex with Spike, not Spike. <laughs> She does have sex with Spike, but that's later. She has sex with Angel, who then reverts to Angelus. He joins he joins up with Spike and Drusilla, and they're going to try to take out the whole town of Sunnydale and the whole world. And it's just a very interesting arc to watch her go through because Sarah Michelle Gellar and David Boring, as they're acting in the later half of season two, I would say surprise and innocence. That's the biggest turning point in this whole show. That's when you really get hooked. I think that's the point where anyone who had their doubts about Buffy that's where Buffy starts to find its rhythm. That's where it starts to be more consistent with its tone, I want to say. And it just sets the stage for things that you can expect in the future. And not only that, there's an episode in season two called Lie to Me, where Buffy's old friend, uh, Billy Fordham, who she went to Henry with back in L.A., he comes to Sunnydale because they've transferred here. And we come to find that Billy Fordham, he's actually trying to become a vampire because he was diagnosed with some type of uh form of cancer so that's the little sympathetic arc he's given to just try to not necessarily well in his mind justify his actions that we see him him about to perform which are again still heinous but it's that it's that difficulty that they introduce there where it's setting the stage that life isn't always going to be easy the good guys aren't always going to be the good guys and the bad guys are they really always the bad guys you can't it's not always going to be this cut and dry there's layers to this stuff life is not just going to be x y and z it's going to be a lot of things there's going to be a lot of twists and turns things you aren't expecting that's just life in general life is very complicated and it's going to be hard to navigate and i think that episode lie to me does a good job at setting the stage for not only what happens in the rest of the season but down the road for all of these other challenges that buffy faces with her mother and when she gets that new sister when she has multiple relationships that do not work and she's struggling in college struggling to deal with financial hardship all these things in life it's not it's not going to be easy life is very complicated and i think season two does a great job at expanding and raising the stakes for buffy i think this is where the show really finds its strengths and we it finds its finds its rhythm being a consistent good show uh, night in and night out when it was airing on television i think this is where most people will say they got hooked and again spike and drusilla great addition to the show great catching up with willow xander and giles but buffy and david boring as they're the standouts in this season i will say that they are the standouts david boring as i would have to argue is having the most fun playing angelus than he did playing angel he is loving every minute of it i feel like he is just thriving in this role he is a tremendous actor and i actually prefer his performance of angelus over angel i would prefer him like this over watching him as angel but he's a good actor either way I like the character overall. But let me know what you guys think about Buffy Season 2 down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and miss the video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.